don't you feel like there's something different, you know? Like It feels like the, the singing part, mm. the musical part of the musical, is done like on a stage for the public. What's up everybody, I'm Rick and I'm Anna and welcome to our bucket list channel, a channel in which we try to realize the goals and dreams that are on our bucket list. One of those goals is for us to watch every movie that was nominated at the Academy Award from 1927 to 2028. Right. For best picture. For best picture, yes. <laughs> Not every movie nominated ever. Oh, that wow. would have been too much. I mean, this is already a bit much, but oh, wow. Today we're going to be talking about One Hour With You, a 1932 movie that was nominated at the 5th Academy Award. Meaning we've already watched all the movies from the 1st, 2nd, 3rd and 4th Academy Award. Right, we're already at the 5th one. Yes, but we, we've also watched all the movies from the 92nd Academy Award in 2019. 2019, right? yes. Yeah, which means we've done 5 years and this is our 6th. The way we're going to do this review is is the same way we always do them first part is spoiler free and then second part is gonna be with spoilers a meaning that we're gonna dive a bit deeper into some of the scenes some of the elements that we liked or disliked while spoiling the story so if you don't want to get spoiled I invite you to leave before the second part will warn you so don't worry about any of that and at the very end of the video we'll also do our ranking we started doing this with the fifth Academy Award uh, we rank all the movie from that year just to see like whether or not at the end we agree with the winner or not also if you don't want to get spoiled but you don't want to see the ranking there will be a timestamp in the description box below before any of that though i've got some uh, short information about the movie itself So this movie, One Hour With You, is a Paramount Picture film released in March 22nd, 1932. So this is our first 1932 movie. This is a musical based on the 1932 play Only a Dream by Lothar Mick. It was directed by... So there's a, an interesting story with the direction here. Okay. Directed by Ernest Lubitsch and George Cukor. Uncredited George Cukor. It has two directors? Yes, yeah, so here's the story. Lubitsch was her originally scheduled to direct one one hour with you and supervised it in pre-production but when the film he was directing before it uh, the man i killed went over schedule kukor was assigned to direct instead mm. okay i see but within two weeks after the film started however conflicts between chevalier and kukor brought lubich back to the helm although kukor remained on set okay. and then it keeps going both Kukar and Lubitsch demanded sole credit for directing and the matter ended up in court but was settled before judgment was rendered with Kukar receiving the credit for assisting and the right to break his contract with Paramount. Wow, that's a drama. Talk about yeah. the period drama. <laughs> behind the scene, yes. behind the scene drama. I mentioned very quickly the, the main actors. So let's go over the actors uh, of this movie. Maurice Chevalier as Dr. André Berthier. Whom we've so, seen before. Yes, we've seen him before in uh wait 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 i know this one it ah i forgot though what is it the one with the queen the love parade that one 1929 yes. the love parade he was count alfred renard and we've also seen the actress J janet mcdonald oh i don't remember who, her who in this movie plays colette berthier you don't remember her no but you just mentioned it she was in the love parade as really? queen louise sylvania i didn't recognize her yeah i didn't not so wow isn't it interesting that a lot of these movies they do this thing with like pairs yeah uh, of actors that just keep playing together in a lot of different movies like uh, before uh, we talked about when we were talking about the champ we talked about wallace and uh, jackie cooper yeah. who played in a lot of movies together uh, that couple from seventh heaven played in a lot of movies together then that seems to be a recurring yeah but i feel like it's something that has been done for a long time mm. uh, even in uh, i mean to us still old movies but more recent than these ones uh, like in the, the 70s and the 80s there were famous couples yeah like movie, movie couples, couples. Mm -hmm. so other actors uh, Geneviève, uh, Geneviève Tobin as Mitzi Oliver Charles Ruggles as Adolf and uh, Roland Young as Professor Olive this movie was nominated for one Academy Award Best Picture that's why we're watching it right and a French version uh, of the movie was also made called Une Heure Près de Toi uh, simultaneously the, the French version was made simultaneously okay uh, with also uh, following the play uh, yeah so it's the same the exact same thing but just in French this is all the information I've got but before like it, isn't it interesting that they would do this 
thing like recording the movie twice once in english once in french like now you don't do that anymore you just dub it right or a subtitle yeah exactly yeah that's interesting but have the same actor played in two languages that's interesting yeah i guess it worked because of the the main uh, male actor who no, he's french is, yeah. Is, yeah let's move on to our spoiler free discussion did you like this movie yes i did i found it very like nice very entertaining fun mm. to watch also it's a musical yeah. and i like musicals mm. like every time they they would sing i'm like oh yeah that's so nice <laughs> so yeah overall i would say that i, I really enjoyed it watching this movie. I would say that he was fun too. I definitely had fun watching it and I love musical, you know it. But like ever since we've been doing this ranking, like I can't help but always like comparing uh, with other movies because we'll have to to compare at the end of this video. And like thinking back, I'm like, it's lesser to me than a lot of the movies we've watched uh, in this year. Yeah, it's it's not a that, very it's a very lighthearted yeah, movie. Not that it's bad, but it's just like a fun Yeah, exactly. A fun ride, but it does nothing it doesn't, more or less. It doesn't. Than it doesn't tell you like a, a deep story, or you know, it doesn't really have a, a strong message or. Anything yeah, it's like very that. superficial. It's, like yeah. it's a surface level, and then you're just enjoying the nice songs and nice, uh, nice little story that they're telling you. So let's talk first about the performances, uh, which a lot of it has to do with the, the singing. I always tell. I always think it's uh, interesting watching these old musical how they would do it back then as opposed to musicals now where it, don't you feel like there's something different you know like like it feels like the the singing part mm. the musical part of the musical is done like on a stage for the public yeah whereas today even when they sing they still act yeah exactly you the know? the scene continues but yeah, we're exactly. singing exactly but then like when they start singing they stop whatever they're doing they turn towards, towards the, camera the camera and, and they, they start, start exactly. performing like the, yeah. the song if that's what you're talking about then yeah definitely i i, re I... but in terms of like the acting or even like the singing what did you think of uh, our characters there so i really like maurice chevalier i liked him in the the first movie where i watched him mm -hmm. in um a love parade a love yes i think he's a very good performer but he's a good actor too but more than a good actor he's a good performer he's definitely a stage person you know yeah. more than an actor i feel yeah exactly you know, there's a lot of time where he's like you said looking at the camera but not only to sing but also to talk to, to the public you yeah know? but it also it works in this movie because Because the movie is made in that way yeah, yeah, to course. allow him to do that uh -huh. and do it in a good way so I feel like they they got him a very good role uh, and what about uh, Janet McDonald I she was good I mean I don't necessarily think she's remarkable or maybe mm. it's because her character just doesn't shine as much I feel like she's not that present and yeah. I feel like she was much better in the uh, yes, parade definitely and she's supposed to be also the, the main like female protagonist but I feel like she's a little bit in the background and even and we say like she's not there that often but take a character who's there even less uh, Mitzi played by uh, Geneviève Tobin yes she, she takes shines. the stage yeah, yeah she definitely. shines whenever she's in a scene you, you feel her presence right yeah. and And you feel like you know she knows her character mm -hmm. the actress it's a little bit of an eccentric character and i feel like she's done a, a very good job yeah. portraying her mm -hmm. uh what about the story what did you think of that i mean as we said it's not a, a complicated yeah uh story it's very light-hearted very superficial it's just a mundane story yeah it was nice it was fun it was entertaining it's a quick pop popcorn flick you know you watch it you enjoy it yeah exactly but i feel like you don't really go back yeah, to think about it exactly much. in terms of the look and sound of the movie so here sound is very important because they're right. singing I, th i thought that the sound is very good i mm -hmm. thought that the, especially the singing parts were very well done in general there are a lot of uh, scenes where there's music in the background yeah and those also w work very well in my opinion the look again this is a movie mostly shot inside yeah there are a few outside scenes but i kind of get a feeling that they're actually set up inside inside yeah they're like, actually outside yeah i don't think they're actually outside it doesn't no, look no. like I don't think it's... the look it it was it was okay yeah. I, don't know. I don't have much to say about it but I feel like that's that's gonna be it with the, most of what we're gonna say with this movie like yeah uh, it's an enjoyable movie and it does its job like it, what it achieves is what it sets out to do but is it best picture material you know I'm maybe I'm a little bit unjust because I'm thinking oh for it to be best picture material like I want it to be special 
you know, mm. for its time, which really doesn't apply today either. Like the best picture movies are not necessarily the most special ones. Exactly. But they at least but leave it has you to have, with yeah, it something. Has to have, it has to have a certain element. Yeah. And I can't really tell for what reason would Could... they have put this movie as the best yeah. picture. Could... Maybe, no, I would say maybe the, the, the performances, I feel like they were really good. But then you nominate the actors. Because yeah. I feel like <laughs> even, even like today when there are nominees that don't do anything like out of the ordinary, you know, it's a story that we know. It's a, but like, is, is this movie doing it better than what we've seen before or what we've seen during the year, you know? Like, is this the, the pinnacle of, like, let's say, uh, for example, Avatar. Avatar was nominated for Best Picture in 2009. And a lot of people now don't like Avatar. I remember back when it was airing, a lot of people were very adamant that it was a great movie. So the flip uh, is a bit unjust to, like, look back at it with today's eyes and say it's not original. It wasn't original then, you know? Right. But everybody enjoyed it because it seemed like it pushed the technological uh, uh, aspect of movie and storytelling to a point where we hadn't seen during that year but even before that yeah? right and so is there even one element that this movie does better than anyone and then you can say it deserves to be nominated at least for that would you recommend this movie i would recommend it yeah yeah whether or not i think that it's best picture material that has nothing to do with it I feel like it was very enjoyable. It's mm. it's very like it's lighthearted. It's it's comic at times. It, I feel like it has a little bit of everything, you know. Yeah. And yeah, it's a nice it's a nice movie to watch. As for me, I would also recommend it. Like I said, to me, best picture. There's a lot of criteria that goes into what I think should or shouldn't have been nominated. Not that I'm an expert, I'm not at all. But like, is it special? That can be one thing, that can be one aspect of it. Or is it doing something better than anyone else? That can be another aspect of it. Or is it even leaving me with anything? Like when I leave this movie, I'm taken back, you know, and it's... Right, it, 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 is it like that memorable? Like yeah, it left something its that sticks impression with on me. And on all three counts, this movie is a no. Doesn't mean that it's not enjoyable. Go watch it, go have fun. Now let's get into our spoiler this discussion yeah so again if you don't want to get spoiled but still want to see the ranking check the description below for the timestamp Now, before we give our spoilers, a short synopsis. One line, a unhappy married couple try to come between a happy one. And so this is a pretty basic story. Guy is married to girl. You know, guy sees other girl who's the girl's best friend, by the way. Right. <laughs> uh, cheats with the best friend and that's it. That's that's the story. Yes, exactly. That's, that's pretty much the story. I mean, there is a little bit of a... An extra thing there, but I guess we'll get to it when we get to it. You mean the end? No, I mean the the part with the the wife and her dream. Oh, the suitor. I don't. Uh, let's get into it right now. Okay, let's get into that right now. Uh, Adolf, the friend of uh, the main character, Mo Chevalier, uh, hits on her. Right. The wife of Mo Chevalier kisses her. He's the one who does it. Mm. Yeah. She kicks him out right away. You know. Yeah. To me, like, she has a pretty clear conscience, or should have. But then in the morning, she wakes up, she feels guilty, she tells him it was just a dream. She tells him what happened, but that it was just a dream. Right. Yeah. And at the end, when she discovers that he cheated, she's like, oh, it wasn't a dream, by the way. I kissed your your friend, you know, men want me to uh, try to get back at him. Yeah. And uh, Mo Chevalier's character doesn't believe her. And so when he sees his friend at the door and she's trying to make the friend like confess, Admit, yeah, yeah, really he's just like, it. oh yeah, let her have it. Because yeah. he doesn't believe that it's true. Right. But the point I wanted to make with all of this is that the kind of consensus that they come to at the end is like, oh, I cheated. You also did something bad, but we love each other. She did nothing bad. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, that was the part at the end. I was like, oh, okay. And the Adolf character is kind of just... You know, he's bizarre. Yeah. He's bizarre to say the least. Uh -huh. <laughs> he, he doesn't talk much. He's just there to to be this uh, this pawn at the end, but also like this idiot. Yeah, we don't to... really see him before much. Yeah. He just appears at the party. At the party, yeah. He calls before saying, I'll be dressed as Romeo. But he has very few lines throughout the whole movie, but such a central... He's such a central character to the story. I find it weird. We mentioned uh, Mitzi, played by Geneviève Tobin. She, to me, with uh, Mo Chevalier, probably steal the show. Like every time when they're together, you you feel the the chemistry. You between feel between them, yeah, the connection. Yeah, and when she's in a scene, either by herself or with someone else, you're looking at her. Yeah, you know? totally. What did you think of her uh, performance in general? Like some of the scenes she was in, I thought her character was really interesting. I think that her character works better. Like she's the one trying to get in this happy marriage by you know yeah, uh, she... making advent uh, advances to the to the husband yeah and it's the same thing that uh, 
Adolf is doing, but you know, uh, she's doing it much better. It. But she's doing it much better, whereas he's just like awkwardly there, yeah. you know. And I feel like her character is way more complex, mm. like better built altogether. Um, it feels like she has a, a backstory, you know. We see also like her relationship with her husband, and yeah. we see how it doesn't really work and why. It doesn't. Which is also a very weird relationship because it started off as soon as they show them the husband is with one of his friends talking, and he's like, "Oh, what am I even doing in this uh, marriage? Yeah. Uh, they have weird laws about uh, murdering your wife." <laughs> There's that one <laughs> yeah, line you yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah, I remember? Like you feel that like he's. He wants to get out of He wants to get out, that absolutely. Marriage. Even when he learns that uh, she cheated, he just goes to uh, Maurice Chevalier to get him to come to the court and testify that they really did it. Yeah. So that he can get out of the, uh, the of marriage. Of the marriage, yeah. And so he's really not into it, which I thought like was, was an interesting take. Like both of them, to me, looks like they don't want to be together, but they stay together. Right. And while he, the husband is just trying to look for a reason to leave, the wife is looking for fun. <laughs> yeah. We didn't talk much about uh, Janet MacDonald, who plays uh, Mal Chevalier's wife. What did you think of her? I feel like I said, I feel like she's been a little bit left behind mm -hmm. um, throughout the whole movie. I feel like this movie wor would like works because we see this we're supposed to see this uh, strong bond between, you know, husband and wife and then another woman trying to get in between them. Yeah. I feel like you don't feel it so much because of, like, the fact that the characters are so unbalanced. Which is weird because in Love Parade, you can feel their, yeah. their bond much... Uh, right, they, they did a much better job there. Yeah. So I'm wondering if it's the actress or if it's the way her role was written. Yeah, maybe because in that movie, she was a queen. She has a much more stronger presence. She has to be the one making decision in here. Uh, that's not the case. Yeah. Another interesting thing is the relationship between her and her friend, Mitzi, mm -hmm. which I feel was a little bit left hanging because sure, she some uh, they somehow came to a resolution uh, with the, the conflict between the husband and the wife. Yeah. But then she never like went back to talk about what happens between her and her best. They're supposed to be best friends. Exactly. And she takes two to cheat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but that... Other than the fact that when she finds out that her husband cheated on her, she says with, with my shock, very best friend. Exactly. Yeah. That's and that's it. She just mentions yeah. like the disappointment, but then that's it. Like it's left there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I felt like that was a little bit, uh, you know, unfinished on that yeah. side. Mm -hmm. And even the resolution between uh, Mitzi and her husband is left. Uh, like, I guess that wasn't the the main storyline, yeah. but they was, just they just mentioned yeah. that, that in the end they break up, but but that he was uh, summoned to court. So you don't even know how that ends up, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So supposedly they're trying to get divorced. But, but yeah, I think that's it. And like we said, this was a very like run of the mill uh, movie, you know, entertaining surface level storyline and most of the character also like surface level uh, like we said Adolf was one note like a lot of them are one note uh, character it's still fun though so we definitely yeah, recommend fun. go watch it go have and fun and the, the songs the songs Very are good. great yeah yeah mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll see uh, more of Chevalier and McDonald uh, oh yeah future. I hope so I think that he's He's really good yeah. in the kind of roles that he's given. He's very entertaining. He is, definitely. Yeah. So that will be it for our review. Now let's get to our ranking. The current ranking at number one, five star final. Number two, The Champ. Number three, Aerosmith. Number four, Bad Girl. Where would you put this movie? One hour with you. Personally, I would put it at number four. I would put it at number five. You think Bad Girl was better than, than yeah. this one? Yeah. Okay. Can you convince me? <laughs> okay. So I definitely had some criticism of uh, Bad Girl and that I expressed, I feel, in the video more than I did uh, with this movie but it's because this movie again is very like surface level you know bad girl is attempting something not always succeeding at it but a lot of time what they're attempting to do is interesting and I feel like it left me with more of an impression I was thinking about the movie afterward uh, about the characters the characters who are much more dimensional than the ones we have here both in the case of the husband and the, the wife and the performances if we talk about like because that's the highlight of this movie definitely more Chevalier was very good 
but uh, the main character in uh, Bad Girl, the husband, I feel uh, left me with more of an impression than Chevalier does and definitely than McDonald does here. Uh, I see. And just in general, it's just Bad Girl is a movie that I think about, not that I think about every day, <laughs> but that I would think about uh, looking back. And uh, One Hour With You might be a movie I forget. Mm, I see what you mean. So I think, as for me, I would, I would put it at number four because... I feel like I was way more entertained throughout the movie. But you are right on the other hand. I feel like it's because of its like uh, of how superficial it is. It's just like an entertaining movie. And considering that these are best picture nominees that we're talking about, I feel like it shouldn't be that. I feel like this movie just took the easy way, you know? Yeah. Of making it like safer. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, we're gonna just tell a simple story. We can't go wrong with it. This is the most run of the mill story exactly. we could tell. Yeah. So I think, I think you're right, actually. Like, Bad Girl actually told a more interesting story. Even though I am sorry because I, I really like the, the songs, <laughs> the performances. <Yeah. laughs> but I think I'm gonna go with your okay so number five so let's get over the ranking once again the new ranking now so number one five star final number two the champ number three aerosmith number four bad girl and number five one hour with you so that will be it for this video our review of one hour with you the 1932 movie don't forget this review is part of our goal to watch every movie that was nominated at the academy award from 1927 to 2028 this channel uh, doesn't only include this goal it's a bucket list channel where we have a lot of goals a lot of dreams 101 goals and dreams that we are trying to achieve in our lifetime if you're interested to see us doing these movie reviews but also a lot of other stuff traveling cooking uh, playing games subscribe comment in the comment section below would you have put bad girl or one hour with you at number five whether or not you've seen both <laughs> movies if you haven't then just tell us what did you think of this movie like this video if you did and have a nice day Madame. Monsieur. Drive up! Stop! Madame, you may think I'm a coward. I am. <laughs>